of all, Katie, if you can come here, I'm gonna have her come up and show you. She went through three iterations of the 947 in order to get this fit. Um, so it's definitely, if you don't get it off your first try, don't feel discouraged. Um, it is a very uh, detailed bra. Uh, so there are a lot of modifications that could, you know, that you might need. And just don't feel discouraged if the first one that you make isn't 100%. The great thing about bra making is that it only takes a couple hours, so you don't spend months on it for it not to turn out. Um, welcome, Katie. Thank you. Um, so before we get into measuring, I want to go over 478, the fit, um, the V-wire separator, because I know there have been a lot of questions about that. Um, if you're plus size, will the V-wire separator work on plus size? Um, and then just adding support, because I know that that has been a... Um, a common question that is coming up because uh, a lot of people feel a little bit like they can't fit into it, but they totally can. Uh, disclaimer, this is made with stretch mesh, uh, not power knit, not sheer cup lining, and it does fit great. Um, so the first thing is I want to go over with uh, support. So the pattern was drafted to be made with fabrics with stretch fabrics. And one of the questions I've come up with, can you make it with non-stretch fabric? Absolutely. Um, so once I get into the pattern making, uh, we'll go over to the other look. I will show you kind of if you were going to cut it out, what you would do for a non-stretch fabric. One of our kits, it's now sold out, but it was the resort kit, used a non-stretch fabric um, for the front of the bra cups. Um, so yes, you can use a non-stretch fabric. Um, and she is wearing an, an extra large EF cup. The Madeline Simplicity 9478 is available in sizes extra small to 4XL, AB through GH cup. Now, I just learned last week that the GH cup was, wasn't included in the production pattern. This was a big mistake, not a big mistake, but like a mistake. So they're gonna fix it and they're working on fixing it, but I don't want anybody to take it negatively because uh, both Simplicity and myself and, and Madeline uh, feel very strongly about representing a wide range of sizes. So we don't want anyone to think that like we're excluding anybody by not including the GH cups. Um, so if you bought the pattern and you're thinking like where the GH cups, there is a copy of the pattern in the um, uh, Madeline 9, S9478 Facebook group. So it's at the private group. If you go in there, I posted the PDF version so you can print it out in an A0 format. Um, so please join the Facebook group to get that file. So it is available up to a GH cup. She is wearing, Katie is wearing an extra large EF cup. Um, so another question that has come up is, does the V wire separator work on somebody who is plus size? And does it, will it work on somebody who usually spills out, uh, who has closed set breasts? So as you can see, Katie does have closed set breasts. Our other model, uh, fit model, Maddie, uh, we posted her uh, 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 about a week ago in a black embroidered lace set. She has wide set breasts. Um, and you can, you can, t you know if you have close set breasts versus wide set breasts. Um, so the V wire separator sits at a place where there isn't a lot of tissue, even on somebody who is normal, quote unquote, who is petite, who is plus size. So this area is really flat, pretty much on a, a wide range of sizes. You don't carry a lot of flesh right here. If you are typically somebody who is close at breast and spills out, that is an issue of the cup. So you will have to slash and open the bra cups in order to create more volume here, but you won't be spilling out into the V-wire. Think of the V-wire as something that's completely separate from your bra cups. Um, so if you're spilling out, it, that's, that's something that goes with the bra cups, not the V-wire separator. Um, also, with the V-wire separator, for somebody who is um, plus size or full, full busted, um, having a wider band is actually a lot more supportive, mm -hmm. um, especially with the long line here. Um, so in a bra, 85% of your support comes from the band. You should be able to knock off your straps and your band should pretty much lay flat and not fall, fall off or fall down. If your band is like loose and everything kind of falls down, then your band is too small. But again, as Katie just did that, her V-wire separator stayed in place, which means that her band was, was really snug and that it was a good fit. Um, so I know that was, a, that was a question that came up a lot because uh, a lot of people who are close set breasts don't think that this pattern will work for them. 
perfect example, it definitely will. It can. It if can. You make the right alteration. <laughs> exactly. It totally can. Um, another thing that's come up is some add-ons. So this one is made out of a, 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 it was a checkered mesh that came out uh, for holiday. Um, and it was lined with like a glitter mesh and then we lined it with uh, stretch mesh. So it all, there are three layers of just a standard stretch mesh. And then the center front is lined with um, sheer cup lining. So um, it really is going to depend on the fabric that you use. Um, but you can add power net. Uh, which was something that is more supportive than stretch mesh. Usually stretch mesh is about 100 grams per square meter. Power net is about 230 to 280 grams per square meter. So it adds a lot of um, support. With this portion right here, I suggest using um, power net or sheer cup lining. I, but as we've been testing it on different sizes and seeing like the reviews come in, some people here, um, it's splaying open a little bit. Not a lot, not anything that would be, you know, you would notice, um, you know, that would be like an eyesore, but just to them as a sewer, they want to fix it. So for this, if you want to stabilize this, I would say for any size, if you're an extra small, small, medium, large, the one that I've made for myself, I've lined this with sheer cup lining and it really makes sure that this has a lot of structure in it. Yeah, it's very stable. Very stable and that V wire separator really looks like a sharp V and looks really nice and clean. Um, we also have added boning underneath um, the vertical seams. And, but we didn't add them on the side. No, this one does. This one does. But we have, on some of them, we haven't used the boning on the side. And it hasn't really made too much of a difference. Yeah. I would say definitely use the boning underneath the vertical seams, optional for the side seam. Um, it just adds a little bit of support, less rolling up, especially here, less rolling up. If you have a little bit of a belly too, the band is more likely to roll up if you don't have that plastic boning. Mm -hmm. And we have a plastic boning that is very thin um, and it's plastic, but it's very sturdy. I know a lot of you who make corsets or are used to making corsets use the steel boning. This is a little bit softer and it'll fit inside the underwire channeling. Um, okay. I think that's it for some of the questions that have come up. Now, Katie, will you get into your first one? The first one, yes. <laughs> and I will show you what it looked like when she first made it out of um, the pattern. I'm yeah, okay. So this, she measured an XL um, EF cup. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna show you how to take your measurements um, once she gets back into the black one. We're gonna go through all of her iterations. So if you could turn kind of to the side. So if you can see here, she's got a lot of spilling out here. So she needs to increase this coverage here in order to just, there's a lot of like breast tissue mm -hmm. that's spilling out on the side. Um, if you can see, I'm not sure if you can see this here, but the curve of this, isn't you can see that it's like gapping right here there's a little bit that we could take out there um one tip that i have there are many sewists that have made the barrett bralette you can use that curve on the barrett bralette for the curve on this one and we've been testing that out and that's really helped to get a nice curve and as you can see here since katie is very close set um she has like a quad boob right now <laughs> pretty intense yeah so it's cutting her boob right here and like half of her boob is spilling out this this one's actually a little bit bigger than this one yeah. Um, so it's cutting in on her. Other than that though, if you can see the V-wire separator looks really good. Um, she did use boning on the side seam and this one actually for her first one, you made it out of all, you lined it with sheer cup lining, sheer cup lining for the front. Um, so I hope that gives you some, some frame of mind for that one was made out of stretch mesh, the black one. This one's all sheer cup lining, non-stretch. So it just shows you that this pattern can be made with stretch or non-stretch fabrics. Um, yeah, let's put on the next one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so on her second one, what she did is she, um, turn to the side a little bit. So she added a little bit of coverage here. I think she, you added like one and a quarter. One and a quarter inches. Mm -hmm. One and a quarter inches. And she still needed a little bit more when she did that. And when she did it, when she did it, she also had a little gapping. Mm -hmm. So she- It's more noticeable on this one. Yeah, it's more, more noticeable on this one. So she's gonna add a little bit more, but then also slash and close this 
um, so it hugs her breast from the strap point to the side seam. Um, did you, you didn't slash and open? I did once. I opened one inch and then on the final one I opened another. So I actually needed a, a big slash and open. So two, two inches total. Mm -hmm. So she had to slash it. So she, on this one, she slashed and opened this one inch and it was still a little bit of quad boob that was happening here. So she had to uh, slash and open it again, another inch, mm -hmm. um, which just a pattern making kind of like rule, not rule, but I always suggest if never to change a pattern more than like three quarters. <laughs> more than three quarters or an inch. Um, you want to work gradually. So whenever I'm doing pattern alterations, if I would say like five eighths makes me a little bit nervous, three quarters definitely. She was definitely bold to do an inch. Well, you saw how the first one fit. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so we were pretty confident that, or she was pretty confident that she needed a lot, so she opened it up an inch. But try to, when you do pattern alterations, try to work in steps. So don't like slash and open something like three inches. Do one, do one inch, then do another inch. Um, what else? Um, for this one, we still didn't include the wire, and that is a change that really helped me in the final iteration. Yeah. So we sell we sell shallow demi underwires for the nine four seven eight. Um, so an underwire is going to help your the frame of your bra. Uh, anchor it to your chest. Mm -hmm. So if you can see here, it's kind of like lifting away, and it's not. Um, it's kind of sitting on my breast tissue. Yes. Like right here, you can, I don't know if you can tell, but there's still boob there that the channeling is sitting on. It's sitting on like your breast. It's not on the crease where her fat pulls away from her chest wall. So that's a little bit more out here. So once she put in that under that shallow underwire, it helped it shape where right where the, the breast tissue comes away from the chest wall. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's go to your next one. Okay. Happy boobs. This one looks so much better. So let's turn to the side here, other side. So you can see here it gives a lot of like really good coverage here. Um, she's not spilling on the side like she was for the first one. Um, let's see here. It lies flat against her chest or against her boobs here. There's no quad boob happening here. Um, she has, yeah, the curve looks really nice. Um, this center, the V wire separator. Uh, looks really nice. So the only alterations that Katie had to make was she slashed and opened the center front cup to accommodate her close set breasts. Um, she added more coverage here and when she did that she had to slash and close this here. And that was really the, oh and she also altered the curve of the um, vertical seam and those were all the only alterations that she made. So again to reiterate if you first make it and you have some alterations that you need to make don't feel discouraged. Um, I'm gonna go over all the pattern alterations. You, it, it's okay if you have to make some changes. Um, let's see the back for a second. And this is the back. Um, so if you can change back into the black one and then we'll measure. Totally. Cool. Measure yourself. Katie, if you will turn to the side. Absolutely. Now you're gonna pretend like the camera is a mirror. And you're gonna take your tape measure and you're gonna measure across the fullest. If you could put your arms like that. Yeah, you're gonna measure across the fullest. across the fullest part of your bust and 41 and a half. Um, now people always ask how tight should the tape measure be uh, or how loose should it be. It should be snug enough where I'm just holding it like this and it's staying level all the way around. Um, it should not be tight, uh, t uh, tight that it's actually constricting you or like um, cutting into your skin. That's too tight that it's going to alter the measurements. Um, then you're going to set your full cup or your full bust measurement and then you're going to do your rib cage measurement. Again, you want to make sure that the tape measure is level all the way around. Level all the way around. You don't want it to be like dipping down like this. That's a no-no. So you want to make sure that it's level all the way around, which is the importance of having a mirror. And I would suggest taking your measurements a couple times because it can vary as you breathe in and breathe out. Um, it's going to be about a half an inch range. And I would also suggest measuring yourself throughout the month because I know that some people fluctuate a lot. So knowing your range is really good. Um, so Katie measured 41 and a half for her full bust and then 35 and a half for her under bust. And she made an XLEF cup 
with some adjustments. Um, okay, so thanks for hanging tight. We Let's get into the pattern alterations. First, let's go over the pattern pieces that you should have cut out. Let me get my little notes here so that I cover everything. Um, okay, so let's go with the bra first. This is the panty, panty, panty. Um, you should have, let's go to the bra cups first. I am making a size extra small. I'm gonna do a little selfish sewing during the sew along and sew myself one. Um, also, it is easier to fit these pattern pieces on a camera since they are smaller. So you should have your center front cup and your side cup. Uh, pattern piece number one, pattern piece number two. For that, you will also have um, the pattern pieces for the lace over lace. Now this is optional. I'm gonna show you an, uh, what I think is an easier way to cut out your pattern um, with the lace on top. See these two pieces? These are for the, if we're looking at the 9478 bra, these are for these pieces right here. Um, so I'm actually gonna cut this out and then I'm gonna place the lace on top and then cut it out that way. For me, that's a lot easier than cutting them separately. So if you wanna use these pattern pieces, totally fine. I'm not going to for the sew along. Um, then you have your no, pattern piece number three, which is the front frame, and this one's on the fold. So this is the only pattern piece that is on the fold. Um, then you have your frame pattern, and the frame gets attached to the center front. The side frame gets attached to the center front. For these two pieces, again, you have pattern pieces for um, the lace overlays. I'm not gonna use them for this sew along. So if you wanna follow along with a sew along, it's number, the pattern piece number eight and nine, and then six and seven are the lace pattern overlays. I'm gonna show you a little bit easier way to cut those out. So really all you need is one, two, three, four, and then you have your back band, number five. Uh, so that's for the bra. And then the panty, really easy. You have your back panty, you have your front panty, you have your gusset piece. Um, for this sew along, I'm not gonna sew the thong. If you can get through this, you can totally do the, um, if you can get through the brief, Pattern, you can totally sew the thong. Um, let's see here. Okay, so pattern alterations, let's get to it. So, the first one that I wanna go over is close set breasts versus east set, east, west breasts. So for that, if you have close set breasts and you're gonna have to slash and open this to, to create more volume so that it's gonna fit over your um, breast tissue. So, oh, here it is. My rotary cutter, sorry. Um, so what you're gonna do is you are going to slash and open. Now, where do you slash and open? I'm gonna do at, right at where the simplicity is. You could really do it anywhere in the, in the middle of the pattern. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be an exact, precise location, but just somewhere where essentially you carry all your breast tissue. So you're gonna slash through this. And you can slash it too and then have like a little hinge here. I'm just gonna slash the whole thing. Balls to the wall, just gonna live life on the edge. Um, and then I save some extra pattern piece paper so that I can do this alteration. So what you're gonna do is, again, Katie increased it one inch. So you are going to, let's just say you're doing the same thing and you're increasing it one inch. So you are gonna slash and open this about an inch. That's about one inch at the edge. Then I'm gonna use a little bit of tape And then tape that there. And as you can see, the pattern looks really wonky. So this is, yeah, it looks really weird right now. So what you're gonna have to do, yeah, you don't want your pattern to have that little dip right there. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to true this up. So from the bottom point, 
up pretty much until the, the, the strap point, you're going to smooth that curve. I'm eyeballing it, but you can use a French curved ruler like that. And then here as well, you need to true that up. And this becomes my new pattern piece. So to kind of go over that, I slashed and opened here. I opened this up. I taped it down. Once I taped it down, I trued up the neckline edge as well as the um, vertical seam. Okay, so that is the first pattern alteration. The second one is gapping at the underarm. So th for that one, you could do it uh, two ways. So one, you could slash and open here. You have to look at where it's gapping. Is it gapping on the side frame or is it gapping in the cups? So I'm gonna show you for both of them. So what you're gonna do is if it's on the side frame, again, you're gonna kinda, you're gonna pick an arbitrary place here um, on the bottom of the side frame. And you're gonna make a slash, I would say to the center of um, the underarm. And you're going to slash and close this and then tape it down. And then you would true this up. If you can see here, if there's a little bit of a, it comes up. Um, so you need to true this up so that it, it, it's a nice smooth curve. Okay, so you can see how I made that a nice smooth curve. So, slashed and closed, and then trued it up along the underarm. If you are slashing and closing on the side cup, again, you're gonna pick any point um, on the vertical seam, and you are gonna slash it to the underarm. And you are gonna overlap. You wanna make sure that at this point, both on the side frame and uh, the cup for this alteration, you want to make sure that this isn't overlapping. What you're doing is you're hinging it over, pivoting it over, and closing that edge, but uh, the underarm edge. And on the vertical seam, you are not doing it, it's pretty much at the same spot. Um, And that's how you would slash and close. Okay, so the next pattern alteration is adding more coverage at the underarm. So you are gonna, this is gonna be a Franken pattern, look at all these pattern alterations. Um, so in order for, for you to make that alteration, I would take an extra piece of tissue paper I would lay this over and I would then, I would lay the side frame and then I would lay the side cup on top and I would overlap them about a half of an inch because that is what's gonna be when you're sewing it. Since there's a quarter of an inch seam allowance, if you overlap them a half of an inch. Now Katie had to add about one inch and a quarter, which is about right here. 
you also probably want to, actually, let me do this. So overlap that a half of an inch. And then you're also going to want to put the back band and overlap that about a half of an inch. And you're gonna want to, it's the best way for me to demonstrate this, um, increase this an inch and a half or inch and a quarter, increase this edge an inch and a quarter, and then increase this an inch and a quarter. Actually, maybe doing it separately is a little bit easier. So let me tape this down and then we'll true up at the end. So this is about an inch and a quarter. Actually, I'm gonna do an inch because on this pattern, an inch and a quarter would be a lot on this size. And then I would bring all this all the way up, okay. All right, so we add an inch and a quarter to the original seam line on the side cut. Now let's do the same thing for the side frame. Or sorry, we only did an inch, I'm sorry. Add in an inch here, and then we'll do the same thing for the back band. Okay, so I've added an inch to all these edges. And now what you wanna do is you wanna true it up. So you wanna overlap them about a half of an inch. And as you can see here, even when you do that, there's a lot of truing up that needs to happen. So I'm gonna cut this so it's a nice smooth transition from the strap point to the back band, because this is how it's gonna be sewn. So I have the side, side cup overlapping the side frame a half of an inch, and then the back band overlapping the side frame a half an inch, and then I'm smoothing out this curve so it's a nice smooth transition. So I've added more coverage from the side frame through the underarm armpit area all the way to the back. So that's how you make that pattern alteration. Um, the next one is, oh, increasing or decreasing the V opening. So a lot of people have asked me, have reached out and said, I wanna order the V wires. What size would you suggest for a double, 32 double D or 42 double D? So for all sizes, we use a size 55. Um, we found that when we were fit testing it, this it, 55 was a really good size that didn't look too big on extra small, but also didn't look too small on 4XLs. So we did not grade it. It is the same across all sizes, but we sell uh, B wire separators in sizes 45 to 65. So let's just say you want to make it uh, a deeper V uh, for whatever reason, might be just a style change. So this is where the V wire separator is. Um, and if you can see here, it should sit about a half of an inch below 
the V opening all the way at the bottom to add like play room because you're going to have a quarter inch here where you're going to slash um, in order to turn the uh, lining right side out. Um, and then you should have about a half an inch here too. So this is like your little playroom because you're gonna have a seam line here and then your uh, chain line can be flipped down. So you still need a, about a half an inch here, quarter of an inch for the seam and then quarter of an inch for turning it down as well. So let's just say you wanna um, use the 60 wire, something like that. You're again gonna place this, this V wire and make sure that it's a half an inch from your V wire opening. And then you're just going to I'm not going to do it on this one because I need to use this for my pattern, um, but you're basically going to redraw that V opening so that the V wire sits a half of an inch from the top and then a half an inch from that bottom, the lowest point. Um, oh, another uh, question that came up is, now on the um, kits, we use a Pico elastic that has a quarter of an inch on each side. So the pattern takes into account that quarter of an inch. If you don't have this Pico, this decorative Pico elastic and you're just using regular Pico elastic, you can totally do that, but you will have to add seam allowances to, where'd that dang piece go? You will have to add a quarter of an inch seam allowance to your front neckline as well as your um, underarm and your side frame and your back band along the top. Um, so that's a pattern alteration. I, it's very simple. You just add a quarter of an inch, add a quarter of an inch, add a quarter of an inch, and then add a quarter of an inch on top of here. Um, so that would be the change if you're using regular Pico Elastic versus decorative Pico Elastic. Um, and the last one that I wanna go over, so on the back here, we finish the top and the back band with the decorative Pico Elastic, and then we finish the uh, back opening with the decorative Pico Elastic. Some people have found that finishing this on top is a little bit difficult, so if you wanna change that, um, I know that the Watson Bra uses this U back. Um, and what's great about this U back is that, especially for plus sizes and full busts, when you use this U back versus just a straight T back, um, the weight is transferred. It's kind of distributed throughout the U. So it is a little bit more supportive than the other one. But as you can see here, we I actually increased this curve um, to accommodate for the strap opening being sewn over that closure or over um, the back opening. Let me see here. So for this, all I did for that was I took out about a half of an inch here and then I just curved it back to the original opening. And that's it, I just took that out. Um, so those are the pattern alterations. Uh, the most common pattern alterations that I've seen um, that have been used pretty much over and over um, when people are posting pictures of the, their fit issues. Um, so the next thing I wanna go over is, I'm gonna work kinda backwards, is that I wanna go over what goes in a DIY kit so that you all understand when you get your supplies, what goes where. So obviously you have your stretch mesh, which is your main fabric. Um, we use it for the front bra cups, the side frame, the center front frame, the back band. Uh, your combo fabric is the blue lace. Um, your elastics, this is where people get uh, confused. So your decorative Pico elastic goes along the front neckline, the underarm at the bottom, as well as the back opening. Now you, your kit could have gotten one or two different types of channeling. One is like a curved channeling and the other one is a straight channeling. You can use the straight channeling for the, um, underwire as well as the vertical seams. Um, we prefer to use the curved channeling 
for the center front V. It's a little bit thinner so that when you get around this V, it curves a little bit nicely or nicer. When you use the regular straight one, it's a little bit bulky. You can do it, um, but I suggest the curved one versus the straight plush one. The plush one's a little bit thicker. Um, obviously the V-wire separator goes in the V-wire opening. Um, then you have rings and sliders. I will say if you're using a decorative Pico elastic, no matter what size you are, extra small, medium, large, the three quarters, um, even if you're getting a half an inch straps, the three quarters rings and sliders work the best because you have to accommodate for the decorative Pico elastic on either side. So even though this opening is only a quarter of an inch, it actually is three quarters when you take into account the decorative channeling or decorative elastic. Um, and then you have your sliders. Um, and then your hook and eye. Uh, so let's get to cutting out. I'm gonna show you um, how to cut out. Now, I am making a size extra small. So depending on what size you are or depending on what type of, not finish, but how you want your finished garment to look, you can use one layer of stretch mesh, two layers of stretch mesh, a layer of stretch mesh stretch mesh and power knit, a layer of stretch mesh or sheer cup lining. So it's all, it all really is up to you. I am gonna use two layers of stretch mesh with the combo fabric on top for the front of the bra. And then for the back, of the, for the back band, I'm gonna use one layer of stretch mesh with one layer of lace. Uh, Cause I want that bra to be a little bit more stretchy than the front. Um, okay, so. I'm gonna bring in my favorite, favorite, favorite bra making tool. Ta-da, Otis 505 spray adhesive. Okay. So let's look on stretch mesh. The direction of greater stretch is always going parallel to the selvage. So you can see here that this stretches more than this uh, direction. And you're just gonna spray a little bit. And then spray this down and pat that down. And then I am working with very little space, so I'm not super concerned about consumption, how much I'm using at once. I'm just trying to get everything on the camera, but I know sewists really like to concentrate on saving, getting most bang for their buck. So if you want to do that, all the power to you. Um, and let's get this in here too. And then you have to watch out for the arrows. So the arrow should be in the direction of greater stretch, which this is the selvage. Um, and then this way. And then this can really be in any direction because I'm gonna back this with sheer cup lining. Um, so it's going to be stabilized. And then I'm using a rotary cutter, which is my best friend. So even though the center front is cut on the fold, I'm gonna cut out each side. 
and not on the fold. It gives a more precise cut, in my opinion. Now I'm only cutting out one side, but obviously you will cut out a uh, another two sides because you have a left and right boob. You don't just have one boob. Um, so let me place that over there and then I'll move on to my back band. And then my back band is just one layer of stretch mesh. Okay, so now I have all my bra pattern pieces. I'm gonna show you how to place your lace. I think this is a lot easier than cutting out a separate pattern piece. So I will place I will lay the lace on top. And your pattern piece, yeah, will tell you how far your lace should come up. So I'm actually gonna lay this on top. And at this seam line, so this has the seam line of a quarter inch, at that seam line, you want to, the top or the high point of the scalp to be hitting the seam line. That way that when you sew the two cups together, they meet and it's a nice point. You can see here. So we have that right, um, right at the seam line, the high point of the scalps are meeting. And then I'm gonna pin this on. And then I can see the stretch mesh through the lace, then I'm gonna cut around it. Okay, so 
So that is all cut out. And then it's ready for sewing. And then you're gonna do this. You want the scalp lace to be a quarter inch in from the center front. Again, I'm going to pin it. And I'm gonna cut around it. Okay, so there I have my two pattern pieces with the lace on top all cut out. So you're gonna use that same method to cut out the center front V as well, the lace on the center front V, or the center front frame, and the lace on the side frame. Darn, I was hoping I could sell for some of that. <laughs> So you want the high point of the scallop to be hitting about a quarter inch below the where the wire seam line is. Pin this in place. and then it's all ready to go. The only place where I would, might use the pattern piece is the center front, uh, the lace on the center front. And that is because this lace actually has a seam. So you're gonna sew the seam on the, um, so the seam on the lace overlay first and then lay it on top. Um, so, let me see if I can find that pattern piece. So there needs to be um, a seam allowance. You can see this is where the seam allowance is and that's where it's sewn together. Um, so you're gonna have to cut two of these, obviously, but this should be on Okay, so I cut one, you'll cut two. Um, and you can see that will go over uh, the center front frame. The last thing to cut out is the lace overlay on the back pattern piece. And that's really easy. That, you just lay the lace over it. If you wanna spray base it, you can. If you wanna pin it, you can do that as well.
Okay, you have your bra all cut out. Let's go over the pieces that you should have. Um, again, I only did one, you will do two. So we have this side frame, we have this side cup, and this center front cup. And then we have the center front frame and the lace overlay. So that's everything that you should have cut out. Um, and then for the panty, I'm not gonna show the panty on camera because it is so easy. Um, for the kit, you got stretch mesh and you got um, some p decorative pico elastic. For the panty, it is supposed to be just one layer of stretch mesh for the front and the back. If you want a little bit, if that's a little too sheer for you, you can use two layers of the stretch mesh for the front, one layer for the back. We have an example here. So on this panty, we use two layers of stretch mesh for the front, one layer of stretch mesh for the back. It's intended with your kit to just use one layer for the front and the back, but that's gonna be up to you whether you wanna double up on the layers. Okay, so that's the end of part one of the sew along. Um, hopefully after watching this, you feel confident to measure yourself. You feel confident to look at the size chart and know what size to cut out. If you, I highly suggest making a toile or a muslin. Um, you can make it out of any fabric that is similar to your um, final fabric just to get the fit. And if you make your first one and there are some fit issues, I hope you feel confident that you can fix those fit issues with these pattern alterations. Um, if you, there is a fit issue that I didn't cover, please post them in the Facebook group. Uh, I will be happy to answer them there. The next uh, part of the sew along will happen this week. I'm just gonna post it. Um, it'll be in the Facebook group on Madeline's YouTube. Um, and I'm gonna get right to sewing. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this.